Welcome back. And we are joined by our good friend Ted Land from the King 5 Newsroom. We stole him today because not only is he an incredible reporter, an award-winning reporter, but also makes a pretty mean tuna niswa salad. Thanks for being here. This is a nice change. I'm usually talking about very serious things. So well, you know, we are a always, nice break from that. We are always glad to bring you over for a break. But first of all, I don't even think I've ever had a tuna niswa salad. So what is it? So I kind of describe it as like an elevated tuna salad that's okay. a lot more filling than maybe what you're used to. It really makes the most of the fresh produce that's available this time of year, whether that's coming from your backyard, your neighbor's yard, the farmer's market, or just the grocery store. The key ingredients here are potato, tomatoes, black olives, um, tuna, I like to add radishes, that's sometimes you don't always see that, and mm -hmm. then um, hard boiled egg in that. So it has a lot of protein, um, it's very fresh, it uses a lot of these wonderful vegetables that we And it's so pretty, it's very colorful, I love this. Yeah, and it's uh, easy to make at home, and you can size, I'm, I'm not telling you how, meant, how many of each ingredient to put in, because you can make this for a crowd, you can make it for two people if you want. I love that, and the potatoes are already cooked, that's already done, the tuna's ready, so what do we do next? Alright, I'm going to have you help me out with the vinaigrette here. I got you. If you could... Um, we have white wine vinegar. Put that in the bowl there with a good pinch of sea salt good in the middle there. Good pinch of sea salt. Okay, I can do that. I love sea salt, so it'll be like a pinch and a half. There you go. A good squeeze of that Dijon mustard. Oh, yeah. I like a good squeeze of Dijon. You know, I put Dijon mustard in almost everything. There you go. And then this is extra virgin olive oil. You're just going to whisk that in there with that whisk as, over there. As I pour? Exactly. Okay. As you're doing that, I'm going to prepare the green beans. These are fresh here, but we don't want to add them to the salad fresh. We want to blanch these to make them oh. crisp tender. So we're not trying to cook them. We're trying to just give them a little bit, kind of take out that rawness. Okay. So it's still going to have that snap and crunch of like right. a really fresh green bean. But uh, this this kind of takes out some of that that raw taste. That, that now I don't think I've ever blanched anything before cooking. I mean, I, I'm not a decent cook. I can make my way around, but this blanching is, very is not easy. something I've yeah, done. And it's, it's a great recipe for summer for a hot day because all you need is a pot of boiling water, really. Okay. I've already cooked the potatoes in this water here, so those are tender. We took those out of the, the boiling water here. I'm going to add some salt to it. I love. Yes, he adds salt like an Italian. Yeah. I love it. That's how you season these. And then I'm going to put the green beans here. This only takes about two to three minutes to get these blanched. Oh, wonderful. And since we probably don't have two to three minutes here on TV by the magic of TV. Exactly. Once they're blanched, you just take them out and throw them in the, in the ice water? Exactly. Or how do you That's do called it? shocking them. Okay. So you want to stop that cooking immediately. If you were to let these keep cooking, they would get mushy or oh, overcooked okay. um, into like a cooked green bean. That's not what we want. We want this to be nice and crispy so we can put that in the salad. So over basically here. this is science. Exactly. Stopping the cooking <laughs> process by bringing down the temperature. And so we're just giving these a good stir here. You know, that looks very nice. Did I do good? Yeah. Can you put a couple grinds of prep pepper in yes, that? Yes, sir. Place? I will do that. Um, you know, this is a salad that you can really customize mm -hmm. as you like because there's so much great produce available this time of year. Some people build it on a bed of lettuce. I left the lettuce out this time. Yeah, sometimes lettuce, I, I feel like I eat so many salads, I get sick of lettuce. And I like how you added the radish too for a little bit of right. spice. Right, that's something, I, I love radishes actually. And you were saying you can add anything, right? Cucumbers, yeah. anything you want? You know, when I first started cooking, I used to think you had to follow a recipe word for mm -hmm. word, find the right ingredients. If they said you needed this olive, you had to go drive around to four different stores <laughs> looking for it. And it just made it so stressful that I started getting to a point where I just wanted to, you know, cook meals that I thought were stress-free and yeah. fun and practical for me. And, you know, if they don't have the exact ingredient that you need, fine. Find something else you I like. I love that. I'm one of those people I don't really like cilantro that much, so I'm always putting, like, parsley in instead, which, you know, some people see as a crime. But those yeah. are those are my, my preferences. And um, I think everybody should think about their daily cooking like that. Like, what works for you? What do you have available? Don't I, take up too much time doing that. I absolutely agree with you. It should be stress-free. And you and I have often spoken of the mm -hmm. importance of mental health and how Absolutely. it is and it should be life should just be lived in a way where we are at ease even when it comes to our cooking so Especially I love that in theory. the kitchen where one yes. little mistake can you know ruin your day <laughs> it really can ruin your day <laughs> if you spend a lot of time so I'm sh I just shocked these green beans here um, in this ice water this actually seems like a fun thing to have the kids exactly help with too. yeah because they can just um, pull it out of here give oh, those yeah. a nice pat dry a little pat dry I like it 
Now we're gonna start assembling this, and this is this is fun. What I do with the salad is I actually I put it in kind of like wedges, so I like that, that not everything is all in one place. You could you could toss it all together if you want, but I, I like to kind of build it in in, uh, in segments, and then your guests, whoever you're serving, can just spoon onto their plates what they like best, what parts they want. I they see. Want so they so you would make like this for multiple people. This isn't just one plate for yeah. just me. <laughs> hey, you could make it for one people. You could make it for a big crowd. <laughs> okay. Depends on how many green beans from your garden you need to use up. Um, I love it. And then here are your go. eggs. We have and the eggs for some added protein. I like to just scatter these over the salad. I think four should be good. I love this. And then do you pour the dressing on top of everything? Yes. We're going to, um, I like to just dress it, just giving it a nice drizzle Ooh. over the entire salad. This looks have phenomenal. Okay, I have to here. try it. I have to try it. Let me get some egg and some potato. All right, here, let me try this. We got a couple of seconds. And let me see. Mmm. Oh my gosh, that is so good. Very simple, right? That is so good. Garnish and tastes so fresh. Oh, this would be just for me. Oh. And a note about the tuna. Spend a few extra dollars on good tuna because okay. that's kind of Can the highlight canned? of this dish. That's what I use here. I use some canned tuna, but you know, they have some nice imported kinds. Um, some people even use a seared tuna steak and then they cut that up if you want to make it fancy. But okay. this is this is the basic This is the version. way to go. Thank you so much, Ted.